My name is uh, Piotr Wojakowski. I work as a conservator and archaeologist at the National Museum of Bermuda. Currently we are working on the excavations of an early 17th century ship, uh, Warwick, which sank in Castle Harbour in um, 1619. This is our second year of excavations and all the artifacts which we raised from the site this season, as well as the previous season, uh, will be conserved at the lab at the National Museum. My name is Doug Ingalls, I'm from Texas A&M University. I'm a graduate student and I'm the assistant director on the project work. Well, in 1619, a hurricane swept over the island and it took the ship and it dashed it up against the reefs. The crew ahead of time had already prepared the ship. They were expecting the hurricane and they had two options. One, they could batten down the hatches and secure the ropes here and leave it in the harbor, or they could take it out to sea. They decided to leave it here, and it came free, and the rift hit, and it sank. We use a piece of technology called a dredge, and the way this works is we have a pump on the boat. It sucks water out of the ocean and blasts it down a tube. Now, this tube is connected to a pipe, and the tube makes a bend and shoots out the back end of the pipe and creates an exhaust. Where this bend occurs, there's an intake here, and it creates a vortex of water, and that vortex creates suction. So by sending this water very, very fast around this bend and, and back out the other side, we create what's called a venturi effect. And we use that to very carefully suck all the sediment and, and coral and stones off the seafloor and off the wreck. Now that we've uncovered the wreck, we've started to record it. And this is a very, very detailed process. When the visibility is good, it's, it's a process of sketching. And when the visibility is bad, you have to put your nose two, three inches away from each plank. And we jot down all these little details because all the details of the wood can give us really interesting clues. And if we look at the planks of the ceiling, which is what you would have stood on if you were in the hole, it's called ceiling. We can look very closely and you can look at these wooden fasteners. They're called trunnels, but it's spelled tree now because they're made of wood and they're kind of a nail. And they go through the plank and they sandwich it together. Well, if we look at those, we can look actually inside the ship because we know what pieces of wood they were fastening and where. And so they give us incredible important construction clues. The process of excavations takes about two, three years. However, to conserve all the artifacts up to a point when they are ready for the exhibit takes about three times as long and it might take six to, to nine years. As the archaeologists go underwater, they start drawing with their clipboards pieces of the ship. Everything they saw down there is measured and detailed and when they come to the surface, they put all the drawings together to make this big master drawing. Not everything can be brought up from the ocean, so documenting artifacts through drawing is a very important part of conservation. So what they can just do is bring stuff up from the wreck and then they'll sketch them and put them back down in the water. For example, something like this, which is an unknown plank or possibly part of the ceiling, which would be in the deck of the boat. So they just take it up onto land, literally trace it onto mylar paper with a marker, and then you see they include all of the measurements so that when the time comes around later, they can do a really detailed drawing or sketch of it to show what it probably would have looked like when it was made. When artifacts are brought up from the wrecks, they're brought to the lab and put in baths of fresh water to leach the salt out, and then they are put into baths of deionized water to get the last of the salt out because salt speeds up the chemical reactions that would damage the artifacts. They aren't put directly from the wreck into the deionized water because the difference would be too great and it would damage the artifacts even further. These are detailed drawings of the Gunter Scale. The Gunter Scale was a navigational tool used in the 16 and 1700s. This is the actual Gunter Scale, which is a lot smaller. This version we have now, we think, is one of the earliest versions of the Gunter Scale. The Gunter Scale allows you to uh, navigate uh, using a series of logarithms. So what it looks like is a ruler. You would use a pair of dividers to plot where you were on the surface of the world using the various algorithms that were contained in the scale. Well, this would have been cutting-edge technology at the time. 
So this is an expanding ball shot. It's basically two cannonballs connected with a metal bar, metal pole in between them. And when they're, it's fired from a cannon, it'll expand and then twist, which is aimed to take out the rigging of the ship. It's covered in coal and sand, and it's been kind of pressed down to be made into a concretion. Underwater, iron forms uh, what's called a concretion. As it degrades, it forms like almost a fossilized shell around it. It pulls sediment and material and things that are suspended in the water, or even shells, and they encase the cannonball or whatever it is. If the material is inside is in really good condition, we remove the concretion around it. Then we put it through a process which is called ER. Salt water can be a large problem for underwater archaeologists. Items you'd expect to be fairly inert, like cannonballs, can have serious damage done to them by the salt. This cannonball, uh, salt has managed to get right into the core, where it's caused a reaction with the iron, turning into iron oxide, and that has expanded, cracking the cannonball, as you can see here. For this cannonball, there's a lot less damage done to it. It's only got a thin veneer of rust on the outside, which can be easily removed with some tannic acid and a wire brush. This cannonball has had a uh, full restoration completed on it. It's been soaked through uh, tannic acid and kerosene, cleaned off with a wire brush, covered in thin layer of wax and then painted and this is ready to go into a museum. These are lead shot and grape shot for muskets and blunderbusses found in the wreck of the Warwick. And the interesting thing about these is they're made of lead and lead becomes more and more toxic the longer it stays underwater. So conservators need to wear gloves to protect themselves from the lead poisoning that they would get otherwise. Hi, I'm Elena Strong. I'm the curator of the National Museum of Bermuda. If you've enjoyed learning about the war, please visit us at the Royal Navy Dockyard and visit our new upcoming exhibit, Shipwreck Island, Sunken Clues to Bermuda's Past. The exhibit explores Bermuda's early beginnings from 1505 to 1684 through her shipwrecks.